And next up <coughs> is council. <coughs> Before we start council, I just would like to say that um, it was a very heartwarming uh, moment this morning when uh, those young kids came onto the ice to find out that they had uh, received that honor of uh, the Good Deeds uh, Cup uh, to, be, to be recognized uh, for a hockey team that's doing something off ice is, uh, is nothing short of marvelous. And it was, uh, it was wonderful to see them. They were truly excited. Um, I don't think the Roy H. Johnson Arena has never looked better than it does today. And I would encourage everyone to take a visit down uh, to that arena. We are hosting um, uh, provincial finals this weekend and again next weekend. So this is a great opportunity to, uh, to make our town really shine. So I just wanted to say that before we got into our council meeting. Um, having said that, I'll call the meeting to order. And item number two is the adoption of the agenda by resolution. Moved by Councillor Rock, seconded by uh, Councillor Crust, a resolve that the uh, agenda be adopted as presented. Right, any discussion? Call a question, all in favor? It is carried. Uh, item number three, confirmation of minutes. Uh, moved by Councillor Rock, seconded by Councillor Crust, resolve that the minutes of the public hearing Regular Council meeting and Committee of the Whole of February 12, 2018 be hereby approved. All statutory declarations having been complied with. Any changes? Questions? Call the question. All in favor? And it is carried. Okay. I'll just be a moment. Uh, next on the agenda, by the way, is uh, citizens period. Um, so anybody who would want to address council, that's the time to do that. I'd also like to mention, um, for those that are here about, uh, about 202 Edwards, um, that's also coming up uh, later in the meeting, uh, but this will be your opportunity to speak uh, for or against it. So I would now uh, open up Citizens' Prayer. I know that Ralph is here. Good evening, thank you very much, Mary Ellen Council. My name is Ralph McLean. Uh, most people know me simply as Vanessa's brother or Gary and Liz's son. I am a citizen uh, of, a former citizen of the Paw, but I currently uh, live in Edmonton, but I do come back here quite regularly. Purpose of, uh, of me showing up tonight is uh, I've informed Jim of this in the past, and other councillors may be aware, but. Uh, my hobby is military history, and I have, uh, over the last 20 years, uh, done quite a bit of research on uh, uh, the town and area war dead. And uh, the war dead plaque in the Legion is not fully encompassing of our war dead. Uh, there's actually an extra 100 people that are not on that list. Uh, so in an effort to actually further capture all the uh, uh, veterans, or known veterans in the PAW, I started photographing the veterans' graves in and upon the PAW area. So if you actually go out to the lakeside, it's, it's, it's quite easy to spot out the veterans' graves that uh, are in the, it's actually five distinct veterans' plots. It's, most people think it's just one, but it's actually five. And I photographed all that. Further to that, I actually went around and photographed the entire cemetery just to see to make sure I could actually capture everybody up. Then I did all the research on pretty much all, everybody that I could in that cemetery. In the process of doing that research, I identified uh, 30 unmarked veterans' graves. Uh, last year, I did a, a test case of four uh, veterans' graves uh, and submitted those names to the last post fund. The Last Post Fund is an organization that uh, marks unmarked veterans' graves with uh, veterans' uh, headstones that would have otherwise been forgotten uh, by family or whomever, so that that person's uh, service to their country is uh, always remembered. So, ten years ago when I did uh, this work with Last Post Fund, it was actually very difficult uh, 
but uh, the, I just happened to kick in the right door and find the right person and I managed to get these four test cases submit, submitted. Those headstones in turn were installed uh, last fall, I believe right around uh, uh, Thanksgiving. So having had that work then completed, I further submitted uh, another 26 names to the uh, Veterans Affairs and Last Post Fund uh, for recognition. Of those uh, 26, uh, they, all, all of them, the paperwork has been done. These are World War I veterans, World War II veterans, uh, Korean veterans, and some post-war veterans. Uh, there's an additional uh, grave that I picked up out at Moose Lake, and another one out at Big Getty, uh, St. Michael's and All Angels. Uh, and further to that, I talked to Veterans Affairs, and I mentioned to them that of the about 200 veterans in veterans, in the veterans plot with veterans headstones, approximately 150 of those stones were in such bad condition uh, that they needed to be remedied. That includes uh, you know, first names being incorrect, last names being incorrect, year births being incorrect, year deaths being incorrect, wrong units, uh, and just general wear and tear. Some of the headstones out there are standing at regulation length, others are this high, Others are three feet in the ground. So, uh, most uh, headstones are uh, not level. This actually presents a safety hazard for anybody that is visit visiting that, uh, that cemetery. And in some cases, you can actually just push the headstone and it'll actually come off its base. So again, I've talked to the right person at Veterans Affairs and uh, mentioned that we wanted a uh, the headstones to be at least realigned. They have agreed to actually reinstall and uh, put in new headstones for all of the, the, the headstones that require repair and maintenance or replacement altogether. Uh, there's been uh, mention from the veterans down at the Legion that uh, for a wish to actually have concrete runners, the headstones installed in concrete runners that you would actually see uh, it's actually under cemetery bylaws where the, we have to have concrete runners now for all the new headstone installations, but they want to see those headstones installed the concrete so that we're not contacting Veterans Affairs 20 years down the road to realign the same exact headstones that they fixed. All of this is being done by myself. I've put in 3,000 hours easy into this, the research, this just in for the veterans' graves alone. Uh, in addition to all of this, uh, Agreeing, getting the last post fund to mark those on, on mark graves, also in Veterans Affairs to install the new headstones and whatnot. The total cost to the town is zero dollars. <laughs> so the town will, will require zero dollars to uh, spend on this. They will come in, they'll do the headstones, they even agreed to do landscaping. I want them to, to remove trees, but they uh, have told me that they cannot uh, remove trees unless the tree is actually impacting a grave. And there's a few out there, one for sure. So I'm basically shooting for the moon and uh, trying to get them to hide as many costs as they can into the actual headstone paperwork. Further to those 26 unmarked veterans graves, uh, two other people, one wife and one child, will be added to uh, those headstone uh, names. So their names will actually be added to the headstones. Uh, one is a, uh, quite actually a famous in uh, the PAW history, Charles Brathwaite Morgan. He's actually the founder of the PAW dog, dog Derby. He currently resides under a, a wooden cross and so does his wife. So he actually is a first world war veteran, so I'll be able to get his veteran's headstone installed and his wife's name underneath. I've already agreed to pay for the additional cost for that. Second is a gentleman from the first world war who died in Piquetonay with his son. Uh, and uh, I will pay for the additional cost for his son's name to be added to that headstone as well. So uh, again, I've also contacted the Paw Chamber of Commerce, uh, uh, gotten all the business names for landscaping, concrete installation. Randy Manage's dad, I think, is staying alive just so they can pour some concrete uh, for the veterans. He likes to come out to my dad's shop and get the latest details on that one. 
Uh, and again, zero cost to the town. So uh, I'd like to actually thank uh, Mayor and Council for the chance to keep you updated. Uh, when they do come out, it likely will be May or June, we'll be pulling our permits. We may need a variance on the cemetery bylaw because the, the way the bylaw uh, currently writes, uh, it says that only town employees are allowed to do work, so we may need to, to have a variance uh, in order to, to pull out a permit. Uh, I expect them to be here probably at least a month. I estimate the costs involved in this are going to be well, in excess of $200,000. Again, zero cost to the town. Any questions? I don't know if anybody's been out there, but it just goes with the aesthetics. They, the ones that you've replaced, they look absolutely yeah. amazing in there. Looking so, forward to seeing yeah. the rest of the project. Good job. Yeah. Outstanding work. Outstanding so, work. It is what it is. Um, it's not just the Paul Lake side, but we're also going to be doing the Paul, uh, Big A, uh, Big Eddie St. Michael's and All Angels. Uh, there's a couple headstone replacements in uh, OCN uh, Church of the Redeemer Cemetery. There's uh, the small little tiny little cemetery that we rediscovered last summer. There's one veteran's headstone in there that will be replaced. Uh, and the Riverside Catholic Cemetery uh, any flat marker in there will be replaced, and there's even a couple unmarked headstones in there as well. And that's it. Just wanted to let Mary and Council know uh, my intentions. So if anybody else in town or anybody that's watching on YouTube uh, ha knows of an unmarked veteran's grave, please let me know. It's never too late to get the paperwork in. Even if we miss that person this round, we can still get an unmarked grave marked. My, my priority, though, is the veterans' plot itself. So, yeah. Wow. That's it. Awesome. Good work. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, top that. Um, all right. Anybody else wish to speak to council? I do. Have a seat, Olivia. <laughs> I'd like to speak to the issue of Stand Up for Oscars, please. I'd like to suggest um, that I'm not against it not being a 202 Edward Street. I do believe that's the best location, um, but I also understand the will of the greater good. I believe in democracy. My issue is the letter that was read into council last meeting. Um, and I'd like, I think we need a community apology for the letter being read in. I do believe it was inappropriate. It brought nothing to the variance request. It was defamatory. It was slanderous. There was very inappropriate language in it. It did not address the conditional use permit. The letter should have never been allowed to be read into the record because it brought nothing forward. It shouldn't sit in the record because that's all over YouTube for people to hear how people in the paw talk about Aboriginal people. And I think we need to be cognizant of that. And I would like to just suggest that at some point, somehow, the mayor and council reconsidering having it in the record. And I suggest that it become removed from the record before anybody else is hurt or anybody else gets the impression that this town is racist. And that's what I would like to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah, could you maybe just clarify which letter you were? The one that said made of bumps from the resident that has passed away, and the letter was from 2006, I believe. And I don't know what bearing it brought to the, the situation at all. Okay. It was the red end that was the first yeah. record before it went up and left. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood which letter you're talking about. No, pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Read it. I'm getting weepy already. 
my name is Rita Lynn Everson, and uh, I own the home at 1011 Tremodin. I'm lucky. My job, my job is in Thompson. So I have the luxury of choosing when I'm going to be in the PAW. My spouse lives here. And I choose not to be in the PAW most of the time because I have a hard time with this community. We are all a story. And what's important to remember about our story is where you start. So I watched your meeting last week and I was so angry when I watched it. You talk as mayor and council. You have a very difficult job. You have to please everybody. I understand that. You did not please me. I was so angry by the lack of leadership that I saw last week. And I'm going to name it for you. I'm going to name what I saw. I ask you not to feel that you need to agree with me. I ask you simply to listen. You allowed people to come into this room and you allowed them to be openly racist. You allowed it. You allowed people to call Indigenous people native bums. You allowed people to say that homeless people should be housed on a reserve because most of the faces are brown. You allowed a conversation to occur about growing this community where the message that was sent was that it was not good for the town of the Paw to address homelessness. You are not judged by your intentions. You are judged by your actions. And your actions last week sent a very, very strong message that it is okay to be racist. You had an obligation to shut down that conversation. You had an obligation to stand up and bring it back to what was being discussed at the table. And that was 202 Edwards. Is that the location? I don't have a problem with it. I intentionally spend money in this community. I buy my vehicles here at greater cost. I choose to do that. I choose to do my Christmas shopping in the PAW. I choose to spend my money and to be a respectful, responsible community member at cost. I choose to pay my taxes. I don't have a problem paying my taxes. I'm in a position where I can, but I do have a problem when the people that I elect allow racist conversations to occur in a very, very, very racist time. As an Indigenous woman who has very pale skin, I don't experience the racism that my cousins do. I'm educated. I speak differently. I have privilege. I accept that privilege. I embrace that privilege. And I use my voice so that those who can't use their voice don't have to. You have a responsibility to do that. So I could not, it's Monday evening, there are other places I'd rather be, but I needed to come tonight. I needed to look at all of you, and I needed to express my disappointment and my disapproval. You did not do well last week. You did not do well. You need to shut those conversations down. You have known, some of you at this table, that the, there is a crisis in this community. Last September, the crisis was well known. To start talking about hosting a meeting, when the, the clock is done, it's too late, so shame on you. If you're going to show leadership, you stand up and show leadership. So, the last thing I want to say, we are all our story. When we talk about homeless people pooping on the floor, because that's the conversation. We have security at banks. We hear business owners complaining that the homeless people use the washroom and they make a mess. You need to go back and you need to start your story a little farther back. Why? Because there are homeless people that have medical conditions. In fact, one of our homeless people in, in the PAW has a medical condition that prevents him from using a facility without making a mess. The staff at the homeless shelter have gone so far to try and get medical attention, to try and get him supports, to try and get him resources. But guess what? Our services in the PAW won't help him until he has an address. So make sure you start your story at an appropriate place. It's not okay to start at Midway. You need to go back, you need to start your story, and you need to show leadership in doing that. And I wanted to be on the record to say, I have no problem with the homeless shelter being located anywhere in this community. Anywhere. 
it is good for all of us. The business sense, the business case alone, it is good for everybody in this community. The costs that you will save in policing, oh my goodness, I think there's a levy being proposed on policing now. The cost that you will save from a business perspective in taking care of those who need is the only reason you need to do the right thing. So please stand up, stand up for Oscars, show some leadership, and let's do the right thing as a community. Miigwech. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, Up front, please. My name is Alexa Young. I'm, I'm born and raised in the pot. I'm sure you guys have seen my face before. I live 30 Waller Crescent. Um, I just want to say that I support what the ladies have said tonight. And I was fairly disappointed when I watched the meeting last week with some of the language that was used and how there's property above people, property owners above people that don't own property. And I think we have to look beyond property owners making all the decisions in the town because are we are we just a town for property owners or are we a town for everyone? So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, then I will uh, close citizens period and uh, we'll move on to the uh, Chief Administrative Officer's report. So these are the report for general operations as of February 15, 2018. Uh, museum volunteered for Chase Ace and ended up bringing in more than $14,000 for uh, volunteering. Museum is also selling raffle tickets right now with proceeds going to the Building Reserve Fund. I think what they're selling is tickets to uh, um, NHL game. Uh, museum has also been renting out the Rotary Room for different functions. Recreation is working with a seniors group for hosting the 2019 Manitoba 55 Plus Games. Broad's medallion course started with eight participants. Recreation director has been assisting with maintenance duties and also working with Ralph McLean on the last post. Wellness center is severely understaffed at present. We're having a very difficult time filling positions. Uh, summer positions with the town of the Paw have now been posted. Acting fire chief passed the theory and accredited 1033 fire investigation course. Congratulations to the acting fire chief. Workshop held with Pineview Manor residents as it relates to fire and evacuation process should there be a fire in the facility. Six new members completed recruit training and are now, are now probationary firefighters and I became aware that one uh, firefighter resigned and moved away. Um, five calls for, or to February 15th, uh, they were pretty much errors or false alarms. Total uh, this year has been 10 and last year we were at 22. Fire inspections at daycares and centers are ongoing. New air packs have arrived last week and they're put into service I understand just over the weekend. Snow removal and preparation for Trappers Festival took a lot of time. Crews spent a lot of time prepping for that, including transportation of firewood um, for the bonfire, transport of slabs for decorating around town and preparing the fort for festival, etc. Sanding and sidewalk clearing is ongoing. Water breaks on Charbloy and a Cathedral, along with some water and sewer freeze-ups. Engineering is working with SMS Engineering and ALTRG Architect on building envelope for energy efficiency. Finishing up on commercial LED lighting program. 2018 draft budget is complete. Uh, we're gonna be looking at setting some dates for uh, council to review. Assistant CAO pr are participated in a FIPA webinar. Uh, we're still having issues with persons in our office. Um, we've increased our security to be present on site at various times. We've increased it to an hour and a half per day. Uh, we also completed land development initiative package, which will be available for pickup March 1st. This is as it relates to the $1,000 lot sales. I can honestly say today I spent probably 95% of my day answering calls about the Town of the Paw lot sales. So we do have a little bit of information out there. I just want to make it very clear. All information packets will be released to the general public on Thursday at 8.30 a.m. And that's my report. Oh, pardon me, yes, March 1st. Okay, any questions? Item number, item number six, uh, bylaws, we're closing bylaws. 6.1? Oh, pardon me, 6.1, yes. Okay. 
Sorry. Sorry. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Rock. Whereas bylaw number 4564 cited the wrong legal description for the public lane to be closed, <coughs> therefore be it, resolved, be it resolved that bylaw number 4568, being a bylaw of the Town of the Paw, to amend bylaw number 4564, being a bylaw to close a public lane pursuant to section 290 of the Municipal Act, be read a first time. Any questions? Call the question. All in favor? I'm going to abstain because the oh, owners yes. and applicants are my family members, so while I stand nothing to personally gain for the sake of perceived conflict, I will abstain. Okay. Um, 6.2, the Local Vehicles for Hire Act. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Rock. Be it resolved that count <coughs> bylaw number 4567, being a bylaw of the Town of the Paw, to provide for the licensing and regulation of vehicles for hire in the Town of the Paw, and to repeal bylaw number 4533, you read the first time. Any questions? Call the question, all in favor? Uh, let's see, 6.3.1, uh, no, pardon me, 6.3 uh, polling subdivisions. 6.3.1. Yep. Is that 6.3? Yeah, yeah. first year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Ford, be it resolved at bylaw number 4566, being a bylaw of the Town of the Paw to provide two polling subdivisions in the Town of the Paw and repeal bylaw number 4237. Be read the first time. Any discussion on this? All the question, all in favor? All right, next on the agenda 7.3.1 conditional use application 2018 01 Edwards. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Ford. Whereas Manitoba Housing submitted a conditional use application with regards to locating a homeless shelter at 202 Edwards Avenue. And whereas a public hearing occurred on February 12, 2018, therefore being resolved that Council deny the conditional use application 201801 submitted by Manitoba Housing to locate a homeless shelter at 202 Edwards Avenue. Any discussion on this resolution? Um, I'll be voting um, against the motion. Uh, well, I agree with the public sentiment and council sentiment that it's probably not the best location for the homeless shelter to be located. Um, we're in a time, the, the homeless shelter's in a time crunch and it needs to go somewhere. So my question is, is if it's not going to go to, to Edwards and it's not going to be located where it is now, then where is it going to be located? So I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to vote against the resolution. Okay. Councillor Ron? Uh, yes. Uh, this, this is a really tough issue to, to be dealing with. Um, the challenge for council is we, we have the whole community to uh, represent and and support or take the make the best decisions possible. Uh, right now, the, the the only reason this is an issue is is because there's that uh, sense that there's timing. It's got to be dealt with right away because they're going to be on the street. They won't have another place. Uh, my concern is the the current and existing site is is ten years old or so. Uh, it was built specifically for that, and it. Now it's not going to be used for that. I don't know what, what the intent is, but it, it certainly, uh, when, when government funding goes towards that kind of uh, construction in our town, and at the time, council spent a great deal of time talking to the public, looking for the appropriate location. And they, may, they could have, maybe they wouldn't, wouldn't have wanted to put it in the center of the business section, but they chose not to, and, and they had reasons for that. Uh, some of the things that are, that are of importance uh, with regard to uh, choosing this as a location is because it's, it was in a downtown core, but it was closer to, to the railway and closer 
to the edge of the, the business section. Now we're really looking at putting it more in, in a central business section. <coughs> and we don't know what, what the long-term benefit or negativeness of, of that situation is going to be. Uh, we want to, our, our 2020 plan, which is our, our community town plan, that was, was built at the same time. Uh, its directive was to uh, create a, a dynamic downtown. It's critical for the health of the PAW and to the region. Uh, so we have to be cautious as council that we don't do things that will affect the next 40 or 50 years because when you choose a location for that, it should be for the long haul, uh, not, not a, a, a quick fix and then we'll, we'll go to the government and get, it, get more money again five or ten years down the road. Uh, we want something that's going to be a long-term reasonable solution. And uh, our downtown area, our heart of the paw, we have to support those that will also rebuild it, reuse it, open up stores, open up commerce. We have to support that as well. <coughs> So my concern is not, not so much, and, and I, I regret that the council's put on the spot that we have to make a, a quick decision. I would be much happier if we said, well, table it for, for two months while we look further and look for other options. Uh, this is, seems to be, at this point in time, this is the only available spot that came up, so let's just do it there. And that's not good planning for our community. And it may not necessarily be great planning for its intended use either because it's an old building there's other there may be other issues but if we're going to commit that kind of investment in that area we have to be sure we've got the right one and and personally i don't think this is the right location right now at this time so i'll be voting against it well i'm voting in favor of the motion basically crystal <clears throat> so I just, I mean, I got to echo some of what Brian and Chad said, I mean, especially the part about this is not an easy decision to make. Um, two weeks ago, when this was brought forward um, for the public hearing for us to gain more information, I really hoped that with some maybe publicity and some community rallying that a conversation could be had between the current owners and or owners, I guess, of the building for the homeless shelter and, and you know, really drive that conversation. Like, I understand that that conversation was tried to had and it, it just wasn't, it wasn't successful. So I was really hoping that with, you know, new information and maybe a little bit of publicity coming to light that that would have changed the flow of that conversation or encouraged some more conversation. And I mean, that obviously hasn't happened because we're still sitting here looking at this building. And, um, you know, two weeks ago, I said that I couldn't vote in favor of it because it wasn't logical to me to have the building move or have the services move somewhere else when there was already a perfectly good building that had been built solely for that purpose. Um, you know, it's adequate. It has the, the different amenities and things that are required for a homeless shelter. But again, you know, these are people's lives that we're dealing with. Um, this isn't some place that we're looking to use for storage. You know, this isn't a business that... If it didn't go into that building, you know, it's not going to be the end of somebody's life. Like this is this is real life services that that we're talking about. So if it can't stay in the building that it, it it's in, the people need somewhere to go. That this community needs that service, and I would be in favor of it relocating to 202 Edwards Avenue. So I am going to be voting against the resolution to deny the application. I'll explain how that goes. So my, my comment is, uh, I just want everyone to know I'm in full favor of, of having a homeless shelter in our community. I think not providing services adequately is what we have now, and that's the problem. I, I believe that, without a doubt. Uh, it's fortunate I went to university in Vancouver. If you've ever been in East Vancouver and seen what that's like, it's pretty rough, beyond belief, right? And, and you get to a point where you see things like there's got to be a new way of, of operating. But the location being proposed to me is not a, right? We haven't dealt with the issue. And some of you have touched on the issue. We haven't once talked about what the issue is. We've talked about a location. 
We have problems now. It's not operated well. It's failing the community. The operation now is failing the community. As someone who has business in town, you see it every day, right? Taking that and moving it to another location does not solve the issue. We're not dealing with what the problem is, right? We're not providing the right services. We're not providing the right supports. And if it's not happening there in a building that was paid for with federal and provincial dollars, how is that going to change moving it two blocks down? It's not. We haven't, we've just, we're not dealing with the issue. So I won't, I will be in voting in favor of not relocating there. And I think, and you talked about leadership, that's what we need to, to me is leadership. You just say, and, and you're right, I wish we had a meeting to discuss the issue, not the location. And, and I agree again with your comments. It was, it was a tough meeting, right? And just started getting off the rail, and I think Jim did a good job bringing it back. But not once did we have an opportunity as a council before that to talk about the issues. We support $20,000 a year to chaplaincy. chaplaincy. Where does that go, right? We, I propose a meeting, we have them, we need everyone at the table to deal with this issue. And just saying, okay, we're moving, got a building, we're good to go. No way, that's a bad business model. That's a, and you touched on that, that's a mistake, right? You don't operate your, you don't do your operating like that. You say, okay, here's our plan, here's what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna do to fix it, and then we find it. We're going the other way around and saying, these guys are kicking us out because they're playing hardball and no one's calling them on it, that's fine. So we'll find another location. That is not a solution. So, I mean, again, we talk leadership and as a group, and you touched on it very eloquently, we're not dealing with the issue at all. We're just talking about locations, right? And, and that's unfortunate, but I think that's where we need to go first before we talk about location. And if they won't give an extension, then maybe Amanda can prod some people, or Nikki or someone else, like to say, what's going on? It's like, because we're all, as a community, I think, trying to do the right thing, but it's, it's not happening. And, and, and I think federally, provincially, they're letting us run ourselves down. Like they're letting us fight against each other when they should be providing some leadership as well and say, hey, come on, MMF, let's sit down at the table and figure this out. Yeah, I mean, I, I echo uh, a lot of Councillor Gibbs' comments. If you looked at probably every hearing that we've had in the last, I don't know how long, it seems like every time we run up against an issue, quote unquote issue, it's a direct result of lack of plan or lack of good management and leadership somewhere, whether that be here or another organization that's running in trouble or whatever. Those are common threads always. And um, to me, it seems clear that, as Councillor Big points out, um, simply moving locations doesn't address the problem. It doesn't create a plan, it doesn't create leadership create administration or management skills that are necessary to bring resources to the table to make this happen in a way that a community needs. You don't, uh, homelessness exists in community, period. You don't get to have community without everybody in community. That includes all cross sections of demographic and people. Um, and so uh, it's not my position that we shouldn't have a homeless shelter. Absolutely, I think it's necessary. We're obviously um, of a service magnitude and population that demands that that exist. What we're lacking is leadership um, in acquiring resources. What it appears that we are lacking is management at the actual facility so that it can exist and be run properly. I don't know exactly because, as Alan points out, we haven't had the opportunity to have a conversation with anybody about the real issue. So I, I vote, my vote will be to not allow, or not approve the conditional use for 202 Edwards Avenue. Um, but that's not a reflection of whether or not I believe that you know, the shelter services are necessary. Um, I just believe that they should be coming with a well thought of plan. Okay. Just so you're aware, years ago, <clears throat> when there was a referendum in Quebec for separation, and if you were in favor of separation, then you vote no. It was totally backwards. And so that's what's being asked of us tonight. If we are, uh, if we do not want the location changed, then we're voting yes. It, just so you're aware of how that, how that, how that vote goes down. I just have a question about something said, though. I can't do no, that. No, sorry. Okay, so yeah. I'll just talk to you. Yeah, there. it's a process. Um, so um, we had our council meeting. Um, as soon as possible after that meeting, I sat down with both. Um, our MLA and our Member of Parliament, um, and had a pretty, um, pretty raw meeting. It was, uh, you know, it's time to put up 
This is, this is crazy. Just keep moving location to location to location without addressing any of the issues. Uh, government paid for that building, and now we're asking government to buy yet another building. This is not the solution. This is not the solution. I can echo just about what everybody else has said here, but there's no point in just repeating and repeating and repeating. I have been asking over and over and over that there be uh, people address the issues of alcohol addiction and mental health. Yep, we will, but they don't. And so by taking a Band-Aid and putting it over this wound is not the solution. The solution is working with the people who own that building and, and make a deal, and make a deal. And I, I, I don't think it's time to shake your head on that yet. I wish we had more time on this, because we're getting pushed. We're getting pushed into making a bad decision, and we're not gonna make a bad decision. And so, I will be voting in favor of denying the application. Yes. Anything else? All can right. I just say, okay. not about this, but can I just say, I know there's some volunteers from the new Stand Up for Oscars Place group here this evening. I know that you guys are a new group that just took over operations in October, so I really don't want you to reflect anything that we said about the services lacking or, you know, the proper management not being there. We understand that you're, you know, you're new to the group, you're new to the game, and you're just... Um, you know, you're just kind of getting in there, so please don't, please don't take offense to that or, or get discouraged because that certainly, I don't think, was anybody's intent. But in the past, right, we all know that there's a history and that there were issues, um, so we just don't want to see that repeated. I'll call the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? It is carried. Um, 7.3.2 Land Development Initiative. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Roth. Whereas Council has been looking at ways to increase tax base and to create com a competitive tax rate which would encourage residential and commercial development. Therefore, be it resolved that Council approve the Land Development Initiative dated February 1st, 2018, with packages to be released on March 1st, 2018. Okay. Discussion on this. So again, this is just a resolution to approve our land development incentive program, I guess, or initiative um, to have all residential lots, including lots at Clearwater Lake, priced for one thousand dollars. So that sale starts on March the first, eight thirty a.m. Get your checkbooks ready. Right. Uh, yeah. Are you I, I speak in, in favor of the motion. I think it's important to recognize that sitting on uh, lots and that aren't generating any revenue, there's no neutral, there's no zero here. They're costing us money. And, and there's some lots that we've, we've invested uh, millions of dollars into areas and they're not being used. So if we don't get people to buy the lots and choose to build and, and make their home here, then, then we'll have a problem and you, you won't generate any new taxes. Uh, so the best way to do that, and we've looked around, others have done it and been quite successful at it, because over time, uh, collecting taxes is a better way to, to move forward than not. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I'll be abstaining from the vote. Okay. We need to broaden our tax base. It's easy to raise taxes, easy to do. You know, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, just raise the taxes, because you'll just have to get more money. Or you can broaden your tax base. Grow your community. This is about growing our community. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, it is carried. With one abstention. All right, um, next up is uh, Financial Administration, Amendment to Purchase 7.41. Amendment to Purchase. I should just put my glasses on. That's what I should. <laughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Gibb. Uh, whereas the wrong legal description was cited in the purchase agreement between 
467-2128 Manitoba Limited and the Town of the Paw. Therefore, be it resolved that Council authorize the Mayor and Assistant CEO to sign amended purchase agreement before 467-2128 Manitoba Limited and the Town of the Paw for the purchase of public lane, plan number 22476. Any discussion? <coughs> Uh, again, again, I'll be abstaining for the same reason as the first one. Okay. Any discussion? Call a question. All in favor? Carried. Right. 7.4.2, payroll and accounts. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Gibb. Uh, be it resolved that Council authorize the following accounts. Pay period 26 in the amount of $111,850.28. Uh, pay period 1 in the amount of $99,282.34. Pay period 2 in the amount of $103,026.81. Pay period 3 in the amount of $92,672.55. General checks 20306 to 20415 in the amount of $234,940.60 and EFTs in the amount of $64,215.79. Any discussion? All in favor? It is carried. Seven point four point three election worker wages. Moved by Council <coughs> Cross, seconded by myself, be a result that Council approve the wage of $250 for the day for election workers being the returning officer in poll clerk positions. So, uh, as was discussed with the consolidation of some of the polling situations and the difficulty in retaining workers for that day, because it's about a 16 hour day, uh, it was suggested that we increase the wage to attract some workers, uh, and that would still result in a net lower cost overall for the election. Any other discussion? Call the question. All in favor? It is carried. 7.4.4, All right. uh, handy van. Moved by Councillor Cross, seconded by myself, whereas the handy van requires the town to sign a mobility disadvantage transportation program 2017 annual operating report. And whereas the town acts as sponsors of the handy van service and are responsible for any deficit that the handy van may incur. Therefore, be it resolved that Council authorize the Mayor and the Assistant CAO to sign the PA Handyman Annual Operating Report to be submitted to the Mobility Disadvantage Transportation Program. This is an annual thing that we do. Right. Any discussion? Question? In favor? Seven point four point five Manitoba fifty five senior games. Moved by Councillor Cross, seconded by myself, whereas a group of volunteers would like to submit a bid for the pod to host the 55 plus senior games in 2019. And whereas they require a letter, a letter of support from the town of the pod to submit with their bid, therefore be it resolved that Council authorize a letter of sort of support to be provided. Um, so, great effort here by a group of seniors. The last seniors games held here was in 2008, and that was a game for the community. It was indeed. Any other discussion? Comments? Call the question. All in favor? Please carry. 7.5.1 Sympathy and Congratulatory Message Policy P 912. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Rock. Be it resolved that Council approve Policy P 912 Sympathy slash Congratulatory Message as amended to reflect the definition of immediate family members as per labor standards. Any discussion? Call the question. All in favor? It's carried. 7.5.2 right. um, Attached uh, is a report submitted by Councillor Rock on the Federation of Canadian Municipalities workshop. Does anybody have any questions about that? Did you want to make a comment on that? Oh, I'll just make a comment. It was uh, a, uh, an event that occurred in, in Ottawa and um, the Tri-Council representatives, uh, three of us went there and made a presentation and participated in a workshop uh, with other communities that were uh, attempting similar similar uh, experiences with uh, infrastructure and uh, new construction and whatnot. We get a lot of help from uh, the federal government with their uh, SETI and CHIP programs. 
our particular program is for a regional uh, uh, waste disposal garbage dump. Uh, we're attempting to work with uh, the three communities here, the OCN, the RM, and the PAW. And uh, we also are working with uh, 25 other smaller communities in, in, the, in the larger region. Uh, so with all of those groups working together, uh, we're, we're working with uh, INAC and to develop a, a new infrastructure uh, that will, will support all of us. Uh, it's a big task because there, it's amazing how much different kind of garbage you have to deal with in, in a landfill site. Um, so our, our result down here was a lot of people were, what they were really interested in was how, are, how is it that these three communities are, are working s together and, and, and how, to, how we've been able to keep moving things forward and, and we, we explained that part of it was that it came from the original Friendship Accord that was signed in 2014. Uh, we had other events. Uh, the the Tri-Council evolved out of that, which is, is where uh, about three times a year, maybe four, the three councils will meet together and discuss common issues and goals and, and joint uh, activities we can do together. So that, that has all moved us forward. Uh, of note, and, and a little surprise, was there's, there's a lot of communities that are attempting the same thing around, across the country, but they're not nearly as successful as we are. And the people in Ottawa uh, keep, uh, are using us as, as a good example of how things should work and could work. Uh, with regard to that also, they had people there doing uh, uh, shots for, for a video and whatnot, and uh, the uh, three representatives here, Judy Head, Rod Berzewicki, and myself, were all <coughs> interviewed for that, and uh, so something will be coming out uh, in the next few months. That's a very productive meeting. All right, um, Museum Board. Councillor Rowe. Our next meeting uh, is, well, not till next month, the uh, first Tuesday of the month. All right. Sustainable Forest, Councillor Rock. Uh, yes, we uh, just had a meeting on the uh, 22nd uh, last week. Uh, this was a, a second meeting. We had a meeting in January, and then we had to have one now because they're working on a uh, sustainable forest management plan. Uh, this is the, uh, it's done every two years. Uh, this is the first one that the new company uh, is preparing. Uh, so a great deal of effort uh, has been going into it. Uh, interestingly, the Sustainable Forest Management Committee is, re is required to participate and, and approve, uh, give their approval to the final plan and whatnot. So uh, we had a second meeting and we, and we may still have yet another one. Uh, and then it'll go out to communities and whatnot and be reviewed by others. Uh, it has to be completed by September 2018. Uh, but it's moving ahead quite well now. We had a meeting last Tuesday. Uh, guest speaker was Graham, the town controller. So that was good. And then Kim provided a card update, and we're giving her update tonight. So, okay. Thank you. Destination marketing, Councillor Cross. Um, so we sponsored some Anitoba Tourism Education Council training. There's some customer service training that's available. I understand they do have some spots still open, so you can, three spots, so you can call Kim at 204-799-1446 if you'd like to reserve. The course starts tomorrow and it's a two-day course and you receive a, a certificate of completion when you complete the two days. Um, we also, as a committee, decided to institute some intake deadlines for our grant app. So prior, we were just kind of taking them as we got them. Um, but sometimes it was problematic for the committee to review everything and get all the information they needed to make a decision. So we decided to go with a few intake dates throughout the year. So the next one coming up is April the 15th. That will be our next intake deadline for the Destination Marketing Fund. Um, we'll also have a live influencer coming up that was uh, arranged by Kim with Travel Manitoba. So a live influencer, not an entertainer, as Kim told me, corrected me not to call a live entertainer. Um, so I think they're going to be focusing on, on fishing um, as one of the things that, that they do. And um, also with Travel Manitoba, um, Kim worked with them, I know, during Trappers Festival to bring them up here for the first time with a film crew to come and film our festival, participate, see what it's all about. So that's super exciting. And they'll be doing some pro 
promo videos and, and that sort of stuff, <coughs> things on their website and, and all that sort of stuff to help us market our festival better. So that was really exciting to have this year. So thanks, Kim, for all the great work she's been doing for us. And that's it. Recycling Board, Councillor Zielinski. Uh, meeting this later this week. Okay. Uh, the Pot Community Renewal Corporation, Councillor Zielinski. Uh, no meeting. No meeting. Uh, library Board, Councillor Kuhl. Uh, our meeting was cancelled. The next meeting uh, is, I want to say March the 6th or 7th, next week, I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, no meeting at, for the Kelsey Planning District or for the uh, Kelsey School Division Committee. All right, this will be then our second and final uh, citizen spirit. If people would like anything they want to say, you can do so at this time. You could probably ask your question now if you wanted. <laughs> First. <laughs> People don't like to listen to me, so when I get an opportunity. Okay, I'll be brief. I, I want to say that when comments are made about the stand up for Oscars board and the lack of leadership, I want to say that I don't think those are accurate. This new group has convinced the provincial government to buy a building. They haven't even been in operation for a year. There's something to be said about the leadership at that table. This new group has raised a crazy amount of money, and this new group has got an entire community. An entire community. That Good Deeds Cup was not just a group of little boys. It was an entire community, a reflection on this community. The leadership is strong. Everybody's being very polite and skirting around the issue. I'm going to be less polite. The question that you all need to be asking is why is that building, the existing building, not an option? So let me tell you what I understand. When the funding for that building was put in place, the Friendship Centre had to operate that building for 10 years. On completion of those 10 years, the building then transferred to the Friendship Centre. They no longer had to run a shelter, but they owned a building. It may be coincidental that the announcement that the shelter was going to close in September happened to be around the 10-year mark for that building. I think not. So let's be really frank about what we're talking about. We're talking about an organization called a Friendship Centre holding an entire community and the most vulnerable people in the community hostage. They should be doing the right thing. The Friendship Centre should be selling that building for a dollar. So that is the question that needs to be asked. Why is everybody scrambling to find a place when there is a building? So that's the question that needs to be asked. And, and frankly, there should be some strongly worded letters beyond the few people in this room uh, saying that. There is a building. It was built with government dollars. It is now owned by a Friendship Centre who does not want to play. So. I, I wanted to validate the leadership. I was one who camped out in October to raise a little bit of money. I was frozen in October. And the lovely street people came and sat with us. They're lovely. They're lovely human beings. They sat, we drank coffee, we talked, we visited, and I was frozen. And Stella thought it was hilarious that I brought my big air mattress, and she told me and schooled me throughout the night that that's not how you do it on the street. What I left from that experience is what a terrible place the street must be. At five o'clock when it started raining, I phoned my husband and I said, please come and get me, I'm so cold. And I went home and I had a hot shower and I crawled into my bed. I did it for one night and I watched the bullying and I watched the violence. What a terrible, terrible place it must be. So to give somebody who lives on the street a bowl of soup and a thin little mat to sleep on, if that's a handout, I don't care. I'm happy to give that handout. I'm happy to pay more taxes to give that. A bowl of soup and a little mat is not a handout. And we need to remember that. There is no luxury in being homeless. It's okay. It is okay for us, those of us that have, to, to do it. So I wanted to say that the Friendship Centre needs to be held accountable so that everybody else can do what we do to support. Thank you. I just have a question. I watched the Committee of the Whole, and at the Committee, committee of the Whole, um, I believe the leadership of this council said that they were going to have a meeting with the government and the Friendship Centre and make them come to the table and blah, 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 as soon as possible, within two weeks, all those things. 
So my question is, did that happen? Um, that's what was said to the public that that was going to happen. Um, and then how did that end up back on Stand Up for Oscar's responsibility as forcing that meeting to happen? Is it the council saying that they don't have the power to do that, to make that meeting happen? And then if they don't, how does a committee of volunteers force a building, a company that owns a building, to give us their building? Like, how does that happen? That just doesn't seem very reasonable either. And if that's what we're using as the excuse to close the shelter and just wait and see what happens, which is what I heard at Community Committee of the Whole as well, I can tell you what's going to happen. People will freeze outside. It's happened before. It happens in Winnipeg. It happens in places. If that's what we want to have happen, that's what we're gearing up for. Okay, well, let me answer, answer your question. Yeah, yeah. let's sure. answer your question, please. Um, the day after uh, the committee of the whole meeting, um, I instructed our CEO to send out a letter. Um, actually, it was our assistant CEO who sent out the letter uh, inviting. Um, the municipal government to the table, provincial government to the table, the federal government to the table, stand up for Oscars to the table, uh, Manitoba Housing to the table, and the Friendship Center to the table. Um, on Wednesday, that's, two, that's the next day, um, for reasons I cannot get into at this point, I'll happy to share them to you uh, at, at some point, but I can't get into it now. Um, it seemed to be in the best interest of all groups that that meeting not take place that there were some discussions and talks underway. And so, if we were to stick our big fat noses in the middle of it, it might, it might harm what was happening. I don't know the results of that yet. I know that it's still ongoing, but I can't get into details on it. So, we did act immediately. And we also, Jim and I met with uh, Amanda Laughlin and Nikki Ashton that following Wednesday as well. Um, specifically on the issue and you know asked you know for them to do what they could do and understood that they were also they were already kind of doing things in the background again I don't want to get into too much but they were doing what they could in their power to ha try to help the situation to try to get us more information um, to try to advocate on our behalf and make sure that the provincial and federal government kind of knew what was going on and like I mean um, I'm sorry, I appreciate I, that I but I, you name, did but know in September that this was happening you did all of you knew in September and so we waited until February knowing this was coming and now it's a crisis when we had months so I think it was a crisis on September 1st absolutely so. it was. thank you okay all right um, sorry. oh I'm sorry My name is Doreen Innes, and I reside at 378 Dufferin, apartment block 16. And um, I'm not new to the sadness of homelessness. Um, I grew up west of town. My dad brought a family home one time at my mother's insistence because all they had was one skinny rabbit in the pot, a family of eight, and my mom looked at him and she said, Cyril, you get that truck, go get those people and bring them home. This was the end of January, and it was bitter cold. My dad, who was an excellent provider, told the family when they got there, they, he said, you will eat what my family eats. And he had that old world mentality where he bought and stocked with cases of food, and they were all in the granary. And he says, you start at that side of beef and that moose there. And he says, you work this way. He says, I'll come toward you with my family. That family stayed with us for three years because they were better off with us. Well, we don't have people like that now anymore in our community that will sponsor a family, as it were, and help them out of their situation. What we have now, what we're dealing with, and I don't know if anybody's aware of it, is these are not just homeless people. I worked for CFS for close to 10 years with disabled people. 
with different disabilities, FAS, Downs, you name it, autism. And a lot of these people that we're dealing with, these people that are suffering out there in the community, are either past residents of residential school or the offspring of those that were there. It's no secret the atrocities that were committed against mankind of, uh, at that time, the suffering, the scars, the emotional scars, what it did to their mentality when they come out of that situation. If anybody is ever in doubt as to whether these people need help, before that shelter closes on at Oscar's place, come down there, have a look, educate yourselves, all of you, and the townspeople too that oppose this shelter moving to 202 Edwards, People should have a look and see that, number one, these people are not addicts by choice. They have a painful memory of what they endured, the suffering that they endured. They bore children when they come out of that school. The children have FAS. Those are some of our young adults. I've worked with FAS people. The government, takes care of people like that. They employ support workers, which was what I worked as with CFS. They make sure that they're properly housed, they make sure that they have proper nutrition, and that their homes are clean, and they are continuously taught life skills. Sometimes they have to be taught on a daily basis because they forget. But at the same time, our people, that we're dealing with at the shelter. I don't get no flack from them. They treat me with respect. Um, when I walk down the street or go into a store, I come out with my groceries. Say, for example, at Giant Tiger, they'll come over to me and they'll say, hey, Granny, they say, can I help you put that in your car? That's too heavy for you, you know? And they don't ask me for 50 cents after it's over. These are our people. The community of the Paw is by large uh, manner an Aboriginal community, Métis people and that. So I think it would be very valuable for people to educate themselves on the habits of different ones, different cultures. And I would ask too that when you go to bed tonight, think about what's been said. Think about the situation we're all facing. I worked with Mr. Jackson, with Mr. Robert Jackson, at a &B Grocery years ago. That man sold many of his groceries at a loss because Kelsey Housing Estates was just a couple of blocks away. And I said to him, man, you got the lowest price in town for bread and milk and fruits. He said, Jereen, he said, a lot of people can't afford to buy that. He said, I can absorb the loss. And so when he went to show us his building, he said, what are you wanting this for? I said, a possible homeless shelter. I got a phone call the following evening, and he had dropped his price by $75,000. $75, that was his way of supporting homelessness. So perhaps maybe now the sale is not going to go through. We don't know. But if it doesn't go through, that's okay. That means that something better is on the next threshold. I thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Amanda wants to speak. <coughs> oh, okay, Amanda. <coughs> Hi there. Um, first of all, I just want to just have to put your name and address in the record. Really? Yes. <laughs> Amanda Lathen, 729 Constant Avenue. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I just want to first of all <clears throat> thank everyone, the community, for coming forward for this initiative. Uh, I remember being at that first emergency meeting at the UCN, and it was very um, inspiring to see all our folks come together for this community of people that. Uh, a lot of our folks fear 
and um, and with this discussion that's going on, I just feel like uh, we're starting to know and understand and should be understanding this uh, problem altogether. Um, Jim and I, I remember a couple of years ago, we came together talking about uh, resources out there. We met as a round table, if you will. We invited everyone from both sides of the river to come forward and produce, um, showcase resources, services out there for our folks. For example, we learned that there was um, a group for depression for people who suffer depression around Christmas time. We didn't know that resource was here in our, in our town. So the, the point I'm getting at is that we know there's resources here to address addictions, mental health, um, just seeing a doctor, a foot doctor, anything, getting a haircut. Um, <clears throat> when, we, when I attended a uh, poverty reduction strategy meeting last month, Brian Rock was there, and uh, Constable, RCP Constable, uh, did a presentation and talked about our homeless people. And I was kind of getting angry at first because he was talking about their criminal records and also shared that the PAW RCB detachment is the busiest one in Manitoba. You know, I was surprised to learn that. So we started talking about all the wrongdoings of the community. And I thought, bit my tongue, you know, how is this helping this conversation to reduce poverty? And really, I just thought it was just bringing up more fear of, of our community, of this community. But then he got into the human side of it. That's when I was glad I kept my mouth shut. And, um, and started saying, these folks didn't, you know, wish or um, want to be in these positions, but that's the way it is, I guess, for a lot of our folks, especially when in terms of addiction. So <clears throat> basically, the constable ended by saying, we need to do more for our folks than just warehouse our community each night and let them go. And so the thing I started thinking about, <clears throat> I think we need to find even more innovative approaches to address our community as well, as perhaps come together again with those <clears throat> resources from our community and also find a way how to deliver these resources to our folks, especially when the doors all close at 7, everybody's out, everybody come at 9 p.m. So how are we supposed to address our community when there's no facility? So we need to find out how to keep it open during the day. And yes, I agree, it should stay at the Friendship Center. And I know people have told us, you know, maybe we should move on. But I think we should also start a letter campaign to the Manitoba Association of Friendship Centers and do everything we can until then we might have to move on and find another facility. So that's another thing that we need to think about. <clears throat> that term, warehouse, you know, and Evan Spremichuk has had numerous conversations with me about his vision for the center as well, how we should um, at least provide and educate. Let our folks know that there's razors out there. Give them a chance to get identification, you know, um, to move on and maybe perhaps get a job. So that's what I, that's another um, solution we need to find as well, is to uh, help find a, well, first of all, find a, a permanent facility and have a place to uh, facilitate and address and educate our community with these resources. So those are my thoughts. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> well, <coughs> Ralph McLean, uh, I just have one other thing here I'd like to actually add from a different angle. Uh, it's just more of an immediate need angle. I uh, met up with Olivia on the, the weekend here. I took in some donations while I was selling social tickets. And so I met up with Olivia to drop them off and uh, we actually met at the grub box. I said, well, come on, I'll walk in here, I'll get you some stuff. And uh, we walked around the store and you know, I had Olivia pick out some items. I thought she was okay, well, you know, she's not picking up too much, I guess they don't need too much down there. And, and I said, well, okay, you know, that's good. And well, do, you, do you need anything else? Well, we need this. Okay, well, you know, put it in the cart. And, okay, well, anything else? Well, well we need this. So, well, okay, well, put it in the cart. And, you know, well, was, well, let's start from the, the back of the store here and work our way forward. And, well, what about this? Like, well, yeah, we definitely need that. Well, you know, put it in the cart then and whatever else. It wasn't a very large amount, in my mind, but, you know, we cashed out and I took the help to Olivia to go back to the, the, the homeless shelter. I'd actually never been in there. It is definitely not uh, the Ritz 
I don't think people think it, it's you know free housing or like it's a it's a thin worn out mattress on a concrete floor in a pretty cold building, and you, there's actually burn uh, uh, hair marks on the, the the heaters from where they burn their hair trying to get warm. Uh, helping Olivia unload the groceries, it, it was apparent to me that holy crap, like there's almost nothing in in the shelves or in, in the fridge. Uh, so there's a more immediate need uh, right now as for donations is uh, they, they need food obviously uh, I actually talked to Canada's largest military surplus provider today I actually called her in on her day off to price out cots uh, military uh, grade cots uh, that they supply the Canadian military with uh, I got the the Ralph McLean price versus the retail price uh, and I got them down to $85 a piece, and these are military grade cots that you'd be using in a war zone. Uh, so there's that option, but I think people need to know that you can't just like something on Facebook or say, I'm with the Good Deeds Cup and think all the problems are going to go away. Uh, we, we definitely need to come together uh, as a community, but I, I certainly don't envy you, Jim, and Council. Uh, I think you guys have been really been backed into a corner and there, there, clearly there needs to be a lot more people at the table. So I'd like to thank everybody that is helping and everybody that is continuing to help. Uh, and please donate, and I'm sure you can contact Olivia on Facebook and she'll gladly meet you at the crop box. So um, it, it's, it's dire down there. And so I just wanted to say that the immediate need is people still need to eat. So that's it. Thank you. All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. All right, we are adjourned. So just so everybody knows, we're going into the Committee of the Whole Room now for the next part of the meeting. So that's your, that's your application. I'm